Hey everybody, it's me again, Driving Instructor Liz. If you're here today, you must be preparing to pass for your permit test at the DMV. Well, you came to the right place because today's video is covering all of the special driving situations questions that may appear on your written test. So that's right, every question we cover today was taken from a real life, actual DMV test. So sit back, sort of relax, and let's start prepping that brain to pass. Oh, and one small favor, please take a quick second to like and subscribe as it really helps keep us motivated to make more new videos for you. And we love comments too, so feel free to leave us one down below. Alrighty, on with the show. Question number one, turn on your windshield wipers and use your headlights on rainy, snowy, or foggy days, A, so the drivers can see you, B, on the high beam setting, or C, only when driving on the freeway. The correct answer, is A, so other drivers can see you. Anytime you have trouble seeing other cars, other drivers will have trouble seeing you as well. So when it's cloudy, it's raining, it's snowing, or it's foggy, and the weather conditions require you to use your windshield wipers, then you must also use your headlights. Question number two, on a sharp curve, you should use your brakes to slow your vehicle, A, just after you enter the curve, B, before you enter the curve, or C, during the entire time you drive through the curve? The correct answer is B, before you enter the curve. If a speed limit sign is not posted before a curve, then you must judge how sharp that curve is gonna be and change your speed. You're gonna wanna slow down before you enter the curve because braking on a curve can cause you to skid. Question number three, on freezing wet days, which of the following roadways is most likely to hide spots of ice? A, roadways near the tops of hills, B, roadways on bridges and overpasses, or C, roadways paved with asphalt. The correct answer is B, roadways on bridges and overpasses. Now, some road surfaces are a lot more slippery than others when they're wet and freezing. And bridges and overpasses tend to be the ones that freeze before the rest of the road does. So they can even have hidden spots of ice that you have to keep an eye out for. Question number four, what is the best advice for driving when heavy fog or dust occurs? A, try not to drive until the conditions improve. B, do not drive too slowly because other drivers may hit you. Or C, alternate your low and high beams to improve your vision. The correct answer is A, try not to drive until the conditions improve. The best advice for driving in the fog or heavy dust is just don't. You should actually consider postponing your trip until the fog or dust clears. However, if you must drive, then drive slowly and use your low beam headlights. Question number five, Use your high beam headlights at night, A, as little as possible, B, only on unlighted streets, or C, whenever it is legal and safe. Correct answer is C, whenever it is legal and safe. You wanna use your high beams whenever possible in open country roads or on dark city streets, as long as it's not illegal. You don't wanna blind other drivers with your high beam headlights, so make sure to dim your lights whenever it's necessary. Question number six. You are driving at night on a dimly lit street and using high beams. You should dim your lights when you are within 500 feet of A, an oncoming vehicle, B, a vehicle approaching you from behind, or C, a sharp curve or hill. The correct answer is A, an oncoming vehicle. If you do have to use your high beams, for example, while driving on a poorly lit country road, then you must turn your high beams off when another vehicle is approaching you within 500 feet and when you are less than 300 feet behind another vehicle. I've had students ask me, well, why do I have to turn off my brights when I'm behind someone? Well, if someone behind you is driving and their high beams are on, then those lights will be reflected into your side mirrors and your center rear view mirror, which will make it difficult for you to stay focused on the road ahead of you. Question number seven, flash your brake lights or turn on your emergency flashers if you a, are temporarily parked in a traffic lane to make a delivery, B, need to warn other drivers of an accident ahead, or C, are backing out of a parking space. The correct answer is B, need to warn other drivers of an accident ahead. If you can see an accident ahead, warn the drivers behind you by turning on your emergency flashers or tapping your brake pedal quickly about three to four times. Now, question number eight, highways are typically most slippery, A, during a heavy rainstorm in the middle of summer, B, when it starts to rain after a dry spell, or C, after it has been raining for a long time. The correct answer is B, when it first starts to rain after a dry spell. Many road pavements are the most slippery when it first starts to rain or snow because oil and dust 
have not yet washed away. If it starts to rain on a hot day, the pavement can become very slippery for the first several minutes. Heat causes oil in the asphalt to come to the surface, and the oil makes the road slippery until it's washed off. Question number nine, even if you know your vehicle can maneuver a sharp curve at the legal speed limit, you should still slow down because A, there may be a stalled car or a collision ahead that you cannot see, B, you must legally drive below the speed limit on sharp curves, or C, the strong inward pull of your vehicle can be dangerous. Correct answer is A, there can be a stalled car or a collision ahead that you cannot see. You never know what's on the other side of a steep hill or a sharp curve, so you should assume that there is another vehicle ahead of you that you can't see. When you come to a hill or a curve, slow down so you can stop for any hazard. You must be going slowly enough to come to a smooth stop. Next question, number 10. To help you manage the sun glare while driving, A, only drive during sunrise and sunset, B, keep the inside and outside of your windshield clean, or C, keep in mind that pedestrians will be easier to see. The correct answer is B, keep the inside and outside of your windshield clean. Clear from the sun can be dangerous, so try to avoid driving during sunrise and sunset when the glare is usually at its worst. To help you deal with the glare, keep the inside and outside of your windshield clean and make sure your windshield wipers are in good working order. You can also wear polarized sunglasses and you can use your car's visor. You want to slow down and maintain a safe cushion between you and the vehicles around you and also be careful with pedestrians because the glare can make it a lot more difficult to see them. Question number 11. If the roadway is wet and your car starts to skid, you should A. Slow down by shifting to a lower gear B. Slow down by pumping the brakes quickly and firmly or C. Slowly ease your foot off the gas pedal. Correct answer is C. Slowly ease your foot off the gas pedal. If you start to skid, ease off the accelerator, stop braking, and turn the steering wheel in the direction of the skid. Question number 12. If you have trouble seeing other vehicles because of dust or smoke blowing across the roadway, you should drive slower and turn on your A. Headlights, B. Emergency flashers, C. Parking lights. Correct answer is A, headlights. Reduce your speed and turn on your headlights anytime it's raining, it's foggy, snowing, smoky, or dusty. Question number 13, if you approach a curve or the top of a hill and you do not have a clear view of the road ahead, you should A, slow down so you can stop if necessary, B, pull over and wait for conditions to improve, or C, use your high beam lights to be more visible. Correct answer, is a slow down so you can stop if necessary. Like we saw a few questions ago, anytime your view is blocked by a hill or a curve, you should assume that there's another vehicle ahead. You never know what's on the other side of that hill or that curve. So when you come to a hill or a curve, slow down so you can stop for any hazards. You must be going slow enough so you can come to a safe stop. Question number 14. If your vehicle starts to lose traction because of water on the road, or hydroplane, you should A, drive at a constant speed to gain better traction, B, apply the brakes firmly to prevent your vehicle from sliding, or C, slow down gradually and not apply the brakes. The correct answer is C, slow down gradually and not apply the brakes. If you start to hydroplane, you need to slow down. And you can do this by just simply taking your foot off of the accelerator. Don't use the brakes. That's because sudden movements such as braking or jerking the steering wheel can just compound the problem and will usually put the vehicle into a spin. Question number 15, you are driving on a city street and see an emergency vehicle with flashing lights behind you. What should you do? A, drive to the right edge of the road and stop. B, stay in your lane, slow down and let it pass. Or C, drive to the right edge of the road and slow down. The correct answer is A, drive to the right edge of the road and stop. You must yield the right of way to any po uh, police car, fire engine, ambulance, or emergency vehicle that's using their sirens and their lights. Drive as close to the right edge of the road as possible and stop until the emergency vehicle has passed. You never want to stop in an intersection, so if you happen to be in an intersection when there's an emergency vehicle, just continue through it and then drive to the right edge as soon as you can and stop. Question number 16, it is very foggy. Slow down, turn on your windshield wipers, and A, high beams, B, emergency flashers, or C, low beam lights. The correct answer is C, low beam lights. 
Remember, ideally we don't want to drive in foggy conditions, but if you must drive, then drive slowly and use your low beam lights. That's because high beam lights will reflect back and cause a glare. Question number 17, when roads are slippery, you should A, pump your brakes to test the traction of your tires, B, decrease the distance that, that you look ahead of your vehicle, or C, avoid making fast turns and fast stops. Correct answer is C, avoid making fast turns and fast stops. On a wet or slippery road, it takes you twice as long to stop your vehicle than on a dry road. So keep your speed below that of dry road speeds. It's recommended you take uh, you drive a minimum of five to 10 miles per hour slower on wet roads. When you're approaching sharp curves, slow down well in advance to give your vehicle enough time to make the turns as slowly as necessary. So make sure you decrease your speed, especially when you enter a slippery curve. Question number 18, to help avoid skidding on slippery surfaces, you should A, shift to a lower gear uh, after starting down a steep hill, B, speed up to enter curves and slow down to exit them, or C, slow down before entering curves and intersections. Correct answer is C, slow down before entering curves and intersections. To prevent skidding on slippery surfaces, Drive more slowly and stay farther behind the vehicle ahead. Make sure you slow down as you approach curves and intersections. You want to avoid fast turns and quick stops. Shift to a lower gear before going down a steep hill and avoid especially slippery areas such as wet leaves, oil, or deep puddles. Question number 19, when driving in traffic at night on a dimly lit street, you should A, drive slowly enough so you can stop within the area lighted by your headlights, B, turn on your high beam headlights to better see the vehicles directly ahead of you. Or C, keep instrument lights bright to be more visible to other drivers. The correct answer is A, drive slowly enough so you can stop within the area lighted by your headlights. Make sure to never drive at such a high rate of speed that you overdrive your headlights. If you drive too quickly at night, your headlights will not light up the road far enough ahead and you won't have enough time to react to the problems that your headlights would normally illuminate. Now, question number 20, at dawn, at dawn or dusk or in rain or snow, it can be hard to see or be seen. A good way to let other drivers know you are there is to turn on A, up the instrument panel lights, B, on your parking lights or C, on your headlights. The correct answer is C, on your headlights. Anytime you have trouble seeing other cars, they will have trouble seeing you as well, remember? So driving with your headlights on, no matter the conditions, is always a good idea because it increases your visibility on the road. Question number 21, it is night. A car coming towards you has its high beams on, which make it hard to see the road ahead. You should A, look ahead towards the right edge of your lane, B, look ahead towards the left edge of your lane, or C, look straight ahead in your lane. Correct answer is A, look ahead towards the right edge of your lane. If another driver does not dim their lights, don't look directly into oncoming headlights. Instead, look toward the right edge of your lane and watch the oncoming car out of the corner of your eye. Don't try to get back at the other driver by keeping your bright lights on. If you do, both of you will be blinded. Question number 22, you should always turn on your emergency flashers when A, you stop near a curb painted red, B, you are driving in heavy fog, or C, your car has broken down on the roadway. Correct answer is C, your car has broken down on the roadway. You should turn on your emergency flashers anytime your car is stopped on or within 10 feet of a roadway, if there has been an accident, if you are in a funeral procession, or when you are moving at an extremely slow speed. Your emergency flashers should not be on any other time. Question number 23, when driving under snowy or icy conditions, A, it is safe to use your cruise control, B, make speed and directional changes more gradually than you would otherwise, or C, drive as you would under normal conditions. Correct answer is B, make speed and directional changes more gradually than you would otherwise. Always adjust your speed slower to account for poor traction when driving on snow or ice. This also applies for acceleration and deceleration. To avoid skidding, you need to use gentle pressure when stepping on the gas or brake pedals. In addition, when making directional changes like turns and lane changes, you'll also want to go more slowly and cautiously when the roads are slippery with ice or with snow. Question number 24, if you need to slow down or stop when other drivers may not expect it, you should 
A, look over your shoulder into your blind spot. B, use your emergency brake. Or C, quickly tap your brake pedal a few times. Correct answer is C, quickly tap your brake pedal a few times. Your brake lights warn other drivers that uh, you are slowing down or stopping. So if you have to brake where other drivers may not expect it, just quickly tap your brake pedals a few times to indicate that you're slowing down or stopping. And now let's see our final question for today. If there is a deep puddle in the road ahead, you should A, maintain the posted speed to make it through the puddle, B, steer your vehicle around the water if possible, or C, shift into neutral as you drive through the water. The correct answer is B, steer your vehicle around the water if possible. Remember to avoid skidding on slick surfaces. Do not drive on especially slippery areas such as oil, ice patches, deep puddles, or wet leaves. Always try to drive on a safe surface with good traction, preferably a dry, solid surface. All right, everybody, that's all 25 questions for today's topic. Not too bad, right? As you saw, lots of these questions were common sense and the rest weren't so bad after we explained them. You can just keep re-watching this video until you can answer all of the questions correctly because as they say, practice makes permit or something like that. Anyway, until next time, thanks for watching and drive safe out there once you earn your permit, of course. <laughs>